line. When is Breeze going to come back? Broken ribs, stuff going on internal, internally. Is this going to be something that helps this team or hurts this team? What we saw this past weekend, they look fantastic. But what I saw yesterday got me excited about the Rams. Mm. And I know I'm jumping all around because one week is the Seattle Seahawks for me. Another week is that's the NFC West. We said this is going to be the best division. So I'm not going to apologize for loving a new team every week because they're showing up week in and week out. I'm not going to say clear cut. There isn't any clear cut dominant teams. Even the undefeated Pittsburgh Steelers aren't the clear cut best team in the NFL. Their record says, mm -hmm. and they're a great team, but I don't think there's any team that's clear cut. Uh, the Saints are an enigma to me because they continue to win, but the quarterback situation is still a great unknown. They beat the Falcons, and Taysom Hill played a very conservative style and was efficient and was fantastic in that victory. Now they've got to do it again, 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 and then eventually Breeze, there's going to be a decision to be made Yeah, for Sean Payton. It's almost like you can't, can't lose, but you also can't win. So say Taysom does something similar to what Teddy Bridgewater does and goes 5-0 and o over the next five weeks or 4-0, and o, and Breeze's like, all right, I'm healthy, coach. That is a tough decision after 11 cracked ribs from Drew Brees and Taysom's got this team rolling. Like, the Bridgewater deal last year was really interesting because it happened in September, mm -hmm. in October. And I was like, all right, Brees is going to come back late October, get him in, get him going, and now he's our guy. I think Drew Brees deserves a chance to return. But if Taysom Hill takes this team on his shoulders, that is a fascinating dynamic for Sean Payton and one that... He is a far more qualified and better judge of what he needs and what he's able to make because it's going to be very difficult to take Taysom Hill off the field if they continue to win. And yet when you get to the playoffs, are you really going to trust Taysom Hill in the playoffs? Going up against Tom Brady, mm -hmm. going up against Russell Wilson, going up against Aaron Rodgers. We've got Drew Brees on the bench. Or are you going to say, am I playing Drew Brees with fractured ribs and just coming off that against Aaron Rodgers? This defense is good. The Saints are great. They're going to be the number one seed if they yeah. continue to do this. I don't know what to make of them come January because a big decision is likely looming. I don't think beating the Falcons twice and the Broncos is going to give him that hesitation. I think if, if Taysom is allowed to play and Drew's still out when they place the Chiefs, the only team with a winning record, the rest of the way, then it might be. I, I just don't think, I don't think two wins over the Falcons and the Broncos and maybe the Eagles, whoever, is going to get you a chance to start in the playoffs or to start whenever Drew Brees is back. I think it's fair to say if, 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 he, if he has to play against the Chiefs and beats them or does really well against them, then it's a decision. Do you think there's a quandary of a healthy Drew Brees? That's, the, that's what I'm saying. No, I'm saying a health. Exp, explain that. You think he might be sitting in because we're going to stick with No, no, no. He's not Bree, right. Brees is supposed to come back in three weeks and we say, okay, three yeah. weeks. That's what Ian right. Rapport said. And Bree, yeah, yeah. He fractured 11 ribs. Right, right, right. He bruised 11 ribs. Yeah. You only have 24 ribs. Like he comes back and Brees says, okay, coach, I'm ready to go. That's a decision to be made. I, I don't know if you want a 100% healthy Taysom Hill who's winning games or Breeze coming off a serious injury where he had the shoulder injury before that and all these other things. Like, I just think that if this team gets hot and gets winning and the team talks to believe on Taysom Hill, yes, it's Drew Breeze's team. Of course it is. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a real heart-to-heart, -heart, though, on what we do because last year they went back to Breeze. Who knows what would have happened if Bridgewater was the guy? I think even over the next month, I, I completely trust the Saints, even with Taysom. I'm in on them, mostly because I like Peyton and I like what I saw last week. I just don't like the NFC. Like I'm looking at this proud conference and the George Hallis Trophy and all the, who's good? The, I like the Rams a lot. Never mind. Never mind who's good. Who's great? Yeah, that's the it. Saints are great. I think even with Taysom, and I think the Rams are getting great. But just like just a quick whip around, Packers, ugh, the Bears, nope. The NFC East ridiculous. The Buccaneers in the South, like who is jumping out is right now. Like I'm into them. Did I you mean, last night you watched the Rams? Are you like Rams? I'm not. I am. I am. You think Rams got it? Yeah. Jared I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. I think right now is such a fun part of the NFL season because this is when you want to start looking about who's getting hot and yep. who's playing well. Never mind the last couple of months, and everyone will be doing it in three weeks from now. Do it now. Look right now before you come down the stretch about who's playing defense, who's moving the ball up and down the field. I know Goff was a little shaky in the second half. We know what Goff is bringing to the table. What their, their defense is doing, I'm into them. I think they're going to win the conference, or rather the, the division. We'll see about the conference. Pick your team now. Because this is when they get hot before December. I think it's critical. And other than the Saints and Rams, mm -hmm. there's nobody I love in the NFC. And I love those two teams. Broncos, yeah. Falcons, Eagles, Vikings, Panthers. That's the schedule for the Saints and the Chiefs. It's Re good. Regular season's right. not the problem, right? Yeah. Like yeah. The Saints, we know mm -hmm. what what's, their expectation is. What's great about the Saints is the embarrassment of riches. Because last year when Drew Brees was out and he came in, just, you know, vision him walking into the huddle. Teddy Bridgewater has to leave the huddle. He's your backup quarterback. He is now on the sideline. Great point. Drew Brees walks into this huddle now. It's like, 
Hey, Taysom, no, no, Taysom, stay here. You're going to play wide receiver this mm -hmm. play. Are you going to play running back and play? Mm -hmm. Or are you going to be a quarterback and I'll be out playing wide receiver? That's the luxury that they have when Drew Brees does come back. It's not removing Taysom Hill from the lineup. It's more just adding Drew Brees back in. Mm -hmm. At GMFB with your thoughts, everybody. Mike Garfolo is here to give us some updates. Uh, Mike, welcome. Some key players got put on the reserve COVID-19 list just yesterday. What is the latest with Adam Thielen? And then those Ravens running backs that I mentioned uh, when I was doing my waiver wires. Yes, uh, so Adam Thielen on the reserve COVID-19 list. Now the teams don't announce whether that means it's a positive test or a close contact. So still working to figure out what the uh, situation is there with Adam Thielen. Uh, if it is a positive test, that'll be a 10-day uh, a minimum waiting period that he will be out of action. If it's a close contact, he could be cleared by this weekend. So we'll see what more we can learn about Adam Thielen as we go along here. Meanwhile, uh, Tom Pelissero and I are told that the Vikings... Uh, are actually holding their building closed this morning right now as they await their test results. Seems to be some sort of a delay there. Uh, so they want to make sure that uh, uh, they don't have any widespread positives before they let anyone in the building this morning. And Kay, you mentioned the Ravens, uh, Mark Ingram and J.K. Dobbins on the reserve COVID-19 list after testing positive. They will not play on Thursday uh, against the Steelers. So Gus Edwards will lead the charge out of the backfield there. They think highly of him. They think he's actually one of the more overlooked players in the league. Well, now's a huge spotlight and a chance for Gus Edwards to show everybody uh, what he can do and what certainly what he has done in the past. Brandon Williams, the defensive lineman, he was a clo uh, close contact, so he went on the list. But John Harbaugh and the Ravens were confident that it was going to stop there. No word today if there's any more positive tests, but we will monitor that for you, Kay, throughout the day. Yeah, pick up Gus the Bus. He's available in 97% of leagues, 16 carries, 83 yards, and a touchdown in round one of this matchup earlier this year. That was week eight. You're welcome. And thank you, Mike Garofolo. We've got Thanksgiving <laughs> Day turducken action, and we get it kicked.